interpret stuff um, as they must. Some are, a doctor of. What some are, are saying that of? you're bipolar. Wow, what does that mean? <clears throat> I guess that you know you're on two ends of the spectrum. Wow, and then what? What's the cure? Medicine? Make me like them? Not gonna happen. I'm by winning. I win here and I win there. Now what? Hey, what's up guys? It's the Nightwing here at Way of Life Esports. Today I'm joined here by Triple from FlyQuest Academy. How are you doing, bro? What's up? I'm doing good, thanks. So, kind of want to start off with the easy stuff. Uh, how did you get into League of Legends and why do you continue to play this game, actually? Yeah, um, I feel like most people kind of have like the same uh, kind of story when it comes to starting League. Um, you're already a gamer, and then your friends are like, yeah, this game's cool, like, let's try it. And eventually you start liking, everything just comes to you, you know? Um, I never really, like, actively seek the career in it, but mm -hmm. it just presented itself as, as an opportunity. So I'm like, yeah, so, it's here, I might as well do it. So which team was the first team to ever give you an opportunity beside <laughs> uh, FlyQuest Academy? Um, professionally, it was Avant God, so that's an Oceanic team. Mm -hmm. Um... They're still around today. Um, I think they're like one of the oldest organizations from that area. And um, yeah, I mean, thanks to them, right? My very first team was with um, just school friends, but that doesn't really count. <laughs> How did that probably went like, oh yeah, let's make a league team. <laughs> no, we were serious, man. We were serious about it. <laughs> oh my god. Did you guys ever, ever <laughs> compete in tournaments with, with, with your friends? Like, way back in the day, you know, mm -hmm. small tournaments, like land tournaments, you'd rock up to the internet cafe, you'd play from there. Versus the other guys there as well, for like, <laughs> keyboard and mice, stuff like that. Yeah, good old days, you know. So, as you kept climbing and climbing and climbing, you know how some people just kind of just stop and they're just hard stuck diamond. What made you continue to keep climbing until you hit like, to the point where uh, org in the LCS would look at you? Yeah, this is like, that's a tricky question. Like, some people could argue, oh, some people are actually just born better, or mm -hmm. just, like, naturally better at the game. Um, and I don't actually know the answer to it, but mm -hmm. what I do know is, like, I just pretty much put a lot of hours in more than everyone else. It's not like I started at a different time. Like, I started what season? when everyone else started playing. Season 2. Season 2? Um, okay, yeah, all the all Taipei the Assassin. Playing. Yeah, Taipei Assassin's yeah. Win Worlds. Everyone's like, yeah, we can all do it! We can all take the world on! No, we can't, because exactly. Korea just destroys us all. And... <laughs> exactly and that's when the the scene first became a thing and everyone's like wow that's so cool like it's it's not like unacceptable mm -hmm. i mean like it's not socially unacceptable to be a gamer yeah a gamer yeah right I remember, so, dude i remember being in school man if you were if you got called out as a gamer or like a person who liked anime or you liked certain tv shows that weren't <laughs> like the popular ones you were just called a nerd and people just didn't talk to you honestly they just thought you were weird <laughs> exactly yeah um so when that became a thing it's like wow this is actually more of an attractive option now for me so yeah yeah so as you finally got picked up what was your first reaction so you finally made it you finally got into a uh, to a team not and you know not a uh what we'll say not the main roster but you you're almost there you're almost there so what was your first initial reaction were you happy were you like my god i finally did it i'm finally getting discovered well what, mm, what, what um, was it like experiencing that for the first time well i think there came a time where it's like I knew I wanted to kind of pursue this. So I'm like, well, yeah, this is probably just part of, you know, part of my journey. Like, I'm glad I'm moving forward with it. Um, but also, I was like really nervous to like start playing because, yeah, at the time it meant a lot to me. So I remember my first game, I was like, wow, I'm actually so nervous. Like, I was actually shaking before, before the game started. <laughs> Everyone says that. Everyone says that. First game that's always shaking. Like, like, literally shaking when you can't <laughs> control it, you know? And I'm like, Yo, just calm down, calm down. <laughs> um, yeah, we've come a long way since then, though. Um, I don't know. I, I took it... I don't, like, react too much. Mm -hmm. Like, too happy, too sad, I guess. It's kind of, yeah. You're like, did you, got it, you got it, you got it, and you were it. like, okay, I'm finally there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, like, yeah. What were some players you actually looked up to when you were grinding consistently? Um, wow, I guess it, I guess it would just be, like, Faker and, like, Bjergsen mm -hmm. or something. Um, just, like, the old names mm -hmm. from back in the day, maybe High as well. The, you know, these are the players you'd watch on your school laptop back in the day. <laughs> so, I mean, it's pretty cool how they're still around these days, and you, maybe one day I'll get the chance to verse them. 
Um, so for this yeah, cool. split on Academy, how long have you have you been with FlyQuest Academy actually? It's been a year, so two splits. So how are are things overall with the team dynamic? Because you play with Revenge, don't you? Yeah. And yeah. you play with Mash, or you and you did yep. play you did play with Turtle at one point. Yep. Okay, so how was it like playing with a player like Revenge? Um, he's like he's like your stereotypical you you know like carry top laners. You have your tank players, you your, your carry players. Mm -hmm. So he's like he's the carry player. He wants to. You know, he, he want to play these champions like Riven, Aurelio, um, get ahead, snowball, and just kind of style on people, you know? I mean, it's nice to play with, right? Because you have someone who could potentially carry you, but sometimes it also sucks because, uh, no hate to revenge, but, you know, like, you can take a lot of resources and not get very far, you know what I mean? You kind of, like, neglect the also, other side. You also play with a pretty good up-and-coming jungler a lot of people have his name in their mouths you have <laughs> fanatic not the team yep. guys not the orc fanatic this is a fanatic jungler from the lcs academy so what's yep. it like playing with fanatic actually i mean i got a lot of praise for this dude um i probably wouldn't say it to his face because <laughs> <laughs> yeah just i don't want to like make his ego so big you know but mm -hmm. um no nah, i think i think this guy is like He's he's definitely worth looking at, like if you're an org or something, mm -hmm. you know. Um I feel like he's still young. Uh maybe he doesn't bring a lot to like team aspect mm -hmm. like out of game, but in game and he's like his mindset, whatever, I know I know he wants to win. So like if you're looking for domestic players, you know, mm -hmm. like, I know NA really likes to focus on like and they just stop importing or whatever. Yeah, yeah. NA talent I, mean, I feel that <laughs> I feel that, yeah. Um Yeah. So the Love thing, the the thing with league recently has been jungle mid synergy. So do you guys actually have good jug? From your personal opinion, do you guys do you actually think you have good mid jungle synergy? Um, honestly, like working with junglers is like it started out as one of my weak points. I think okay um, throughout my years, even last year, even probably the year before. Um. But towards this year, like, towards the end of it, I started duoing with him a lot. Like, yo, bro, like, we got a duo. Um, we just start playing together. And I guess naturally me and him became kind of close as people as well. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's just what happens, right? Like, you, mm -hmm. you kind of build that synergy over time. Okay. So, I think it started out bad. Now, we're at an okay level. And since MASH got promoted to the main roster for a little bit you got a chance to play with legacy player wild turtle so what was it like playing with uh wild turtle actually so i think like the old players like turtle um these guys have like their idea of how they want to play the game they're, they're already it's already set yeah <laughs> yeah that like they've been around for so long um he was kind of like um he talked a lot more than match so like he he demanded mm -hmm. people to do stuff resources, um, resources as, yeah i suppose yeah um, guys, you can come by, like, there's an opportunity here. He played really aggressively. I, like, he was known for this anyways, mm -hmm. back in the day. Um, but yeah, it's true. Like, first-hand experience, he's very aggressive. It may not be good sometimes, but he's always, like, you, you, you gotta be on your toes, right? Like, mm -hmm. he's always looking for opportunities. And What's the difference? Saying, what would be like, the biggest difference between Wild Turtle and MASH from playing with them? It's kind of just like what I mentioned just before. Um, like the guy's always looking for opportunities. Okay. So I think that's kind of what makes a good player. You know, you never want to be in a game and not know what you're doing mm -hmm. at like a certain point in time, right? That would kind of suck. So as League is now from pretty much season eight, it's all about faster gameplay, getting turret plating, Rift Herald's 10 minutes. Did you prefer the game when it was like scaled towards 40 minutes when a team fight get a Baron, or do you like the way League is transformed into right now? No, I think I like it how it is now. Um it's it's a lot more team player focused. You you rarely see like one player just manage to carry an entire team or whatever. I think the style it was before was a bit too forgiving. Okay. So yeah, I, I you'd have like mm -hmm. I guess it's like better for the viewing experience or worse <laughs> for the pros, right? Um I guess since like our year went so poorly, maybe I would have preferred that. So <laughs> we could have won something, you know? Oh but yeah, no, I I prefer how it is now. So for sure. Looking back this year and going through your uh your splits in the uh LCS 
NA Academy 2020 Spring Split and the uh, Summer Split for 2020, what would be the biggest things that you would change if you could go back right now and change them? Yeah, shit. Um, I mean, honestly, not too satisfied. Like, you know, you know what happened, like the result of mm -hmm. our split and everything. So I think there's one like downfall of me is I know a lot of players suffer from the same thing, but it's like how you communicate with people, you know, because mm -hmm. within teams, like we're all gamers, right? Like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't grow up like the most social person. I don't know how to like, um, I guess express myself in like the best way. Um, and that can lead to like a lot of conflict, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I feel like just being completely transparent, that's kind of what happened this year. Um, that's kind of what happened to me last year too. And yeah, it's something I'm really conscious about and I'm working on, but it's not like that quick of a fix, you know? So when you're playing an actual professional game, quote unquote, online, do you think that would, yeah. would be different if you're playing it in a stage? Because some people say there's a difference between the online games and the stage. Because if the, if the regular season was going, you know how they have some days where the academy games are on stage, would you prefer being on stage? Um, yeah, I think I definitely prefer being on stage. Okay. Um, because like, I feel like I've been around for a long time. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe not in this scene, but mm -hmm. not like not in NA, but... I've had like a lot of experience with nerves and whatever, so a lot of more seasoned players kind of find that advantage on stage. I know it's kind of like intangible, um, maybe a myth, I don't know, but yeah, it's like, I feel like some people, like the majority of players play better mm -hmm. at the comfort of their own homes. And So yeah. as a player who's on a team, a you know, a team that builds off usually momentum. How, when you win a game, what what is your biggest satisfaction for winning a game? Do you like winning games by just smashing the early game, taking all objectives, uh, not making a mistake? Kind of like Team Liquid does right now. They you know they don't make mistakes. They kind of just wait and they punish you for making a mistake, and, but they don't really take risks themselves. Um, no, I like I like just like completely outclassing people. So like, <laughs> win lane, smash... win game. <laughs> Yeah, if I can smash my opponent, I'd feel good about it. I know it's kind of, like, selfish to say, right? Because mm -hmm. it is the team game, but um, if you really break the game down, it's, like, it's a bunch of, like, individuals. Like, 1v1, 1v1, and then eventually come together after that, right? So, just knowing I play better than my opponent mm -hmm. is a good feeling. Mm. So... Those are, like, I remember those are, like, the games where, you know, you don't feel like you should have won. You win those in the games you feel like you should have won. You lose those. That's just how, God, those are weird for League. I mean, that's how it is. Yeah, that's how League is. Sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm inting a game and I'd still win because everyone carries me. <laughs> so, as the mid lane pool has shaped up over, over, over the years, uh, what do you think has been one, one, one of the more broken mid lane champions to come out? In the last past recent years, or even a rework, actually, we had the Galio rework that was really broken. The Malzar rework in like season seven, not season seven, season five, but that was pretty big. The yeah. Vladimir one was pretty big. Zoe came out. I think Zoe, she was she was pretty broken when she came out. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know what they were doing. Were they thinking? Oh my god! It does. She would literally one shot you. It wasn't even like you build whatever you want. She just killed you instantly, unless you were a tank. Then you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I think Zoe is definitely the most obnoxious one. Just because you can win, like, you can swing games mm -hmm. with the RNG on her W. Okay. I think it's, that that particular mechanic needs to get removed. Because, like, why can she pick up a Protobelt or a Redemption or something and just completely change the line? Or just, like, 100 to me at level 3 or 4, you know? Um, but I wouldn't say she's broken. She's just, like, mm -hmm. really annoying. Because I guess, like, it's just... It's just, like, there's too many variables playing against her. What? Um, but Galio is definitely like the most OP rework champion. Why? Why would you sure. say that? Um, because of like the impact he has on the map. Like, okay. everyone on the map has to just play safe because mm -hmm. of him. And also, you can't really punish him early. So like, um, I guess you you just lock in yellow and you just have pressure across the map. It's like mid laners don't really complain about it because you're you're not pressured. Mm -hmm in the lane but your side laners are going to have a big cry about it so so when it comes to drafting 
how would how do you guys prepare go for a draft not like exactly all the secrets obviously but you know like so uh, people have to have this idea that it's all the coaches fault if you lose a game it's all the coaches fault the draft stinks coaches suck it's like i told yeah. you that's not how that works though it's, it's literally not how that works you know so for you guys specifically how do you prep for a draft though no you're 100 percent right um i know most players should know this but mm -hmm. yeah um the draft is pretty much a six-man job like you have your five players you have your coach your coach is kind of the glue. He brings it all together. Okay. But um, a lot of baseline knowledge, a lot of the matchups, like you are, as a player, you're responsible for. So I need to tell my coach like what I want to play into a certain champion. And so the way we do that is at the start of the week, we have um, this kind of a brief meeting on like what, we, mm -hmm. what you want to play, what you want to test, how you want to draft. Um, and then at the, the day before, your actual match everyone comes together at night and then you kind of like finalize that you know okay so when you're maybe one to two hours so which compositions would you say you guys are the strongest on poke composition siege compositions <clears throat> um i think grouping and 5v5ing okay is our strong point in a in a hey, ram <laughs> yeah and a ram really like <laughs> i think though that's like the easiest style to be good at Mm -hmm. like, if you're a bad team, then um, you kind of do play that style, you know? Why do you think NA is bad at playing, like, let's say, side lane pressure or playing off of one carry? Because normally a lot of NA teams just kind of focus on going mid and, you know, obviously just only focusing through that. When we've seen other regions play scaling, playing for side lane pressure, some teams only play for objectives. We're, we're kind of, NA is kind of known for just dragon soul stacking till 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I think that's yeah. just Team Liquid. I think that's just Team Liquid that does that. But, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. NA, NA just has a thing for Dragons and Heralds. <laughs> but I, I don't even think it's bad to just trade it away for, like, okay. two or three plates on a side tower or just, like, farm or maybe the entire tower. I don't know. But, um, yeah, there's, there's kind of just, like, a way you're taught to play the game here. Okay. That's kind of been normalized. Yeah, you just have to, like, it's just objectives. You got to play as mm -hmm. a team, whatever, whatever. And I think... A lot of teams here are kind of like afraid to take that step. Why do you think that? Where it's like, um, I just think it's like the culture here, you know, like mm -hmm. it's it's similar to like, um, a lot of NA domestic players not getting the chance to play from academy. Like, say, I don't know, maybe Palafox for example from C9 Academy, okay. right? Like, I think this guy's really fucking good. Like, he could play LCS, but I guess like no one's just giving him the chance to. You know what I mean? And, like, you can say the the same about a lot of players. And I guess it's because the way you look matters a lot more here. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> that's why people that's why people are, like, afraid to play these certain styles as well. Because, like, the whole comp revolves around that guy. And I guess, like, if it goes bad, then, you know, you look bad, your team looks bad, mm -hmm. the org looks bad. I think and with, it just NA, so with, much, with yeah, like it. NA, it's all based on like if you look this one good game that could carry your whole career for like two years, and then apparently Reddit always knew you were shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. And yeah, Reddit opinions matter. Like, well, no, why they I mean, do I, I, matter? To I, a I, I, I would ask you that. Why do you think Reddit has so much sway in the community? For like, I guess orgs even take it as <clears throat> so, some of the opinions. Some of the orgs do look at it and go, "My God, maybe this player really does suck," you know. But do you think that should be it that way, honestly? Yeah, I don't know. I think, like, I swear it does have an opinion. Like, even it might even affect like a, t a, a player's opinion on their own teammate. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't. I don't know why that is. I think. I'm not like a psychologist, you know, so I don't say anything. <laughs> I totally but... forgot. You guys are coached by Cop too. My God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think Cop have a legacy roster? Yeah. yeah. Do you think Cop is a good head coach? Actually. Um. Yeah. He he does a good job at like. He's like the glue, you know. Mm -hmm. If there was one word to describe him. Okay. He, he basically kind of reels everybody in towards one vision. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Put puts the team together. Okay. I think that's what a coach should do. So as a kind of a future question for your for your career, since you've been here for a, a very long time, uh, what would be an ideal org in the LCS you'd you'd want to um take down one day? Just take them down in a finals, three zero sweep them. Um. Damn, I don't really like 
have any beef with anyone or like <laughs> have any rivalry so it's like hard to say you know i guess dsm's like <laughs> just the go-to org if you want to like Five dream finals you they, they have you like a triple, take a shot at them <laughs> triple triple <laughs> you know you gotta you gotta have to do a crowned in season six worlds i'm uh, sorry yeah, season season seven worlds you're gonna have to play you're gonna play the mouse hard dude you know what play mouse hard don't lose to bjergsen <laughs> exactly exactly man <laughs> so um for world specifically uh this year for worlds do you think it's gonna be different because we don't we're not gonna really have it the same way um you mean like with the whole covid situation yeah um i guess so i mean it, it really affects like the way people practice like a lot of teams decide to boot camp as well mm -hmm. before worlds so you go to korea play there um i don't know if that's an option this time i mean i guess you can reach korea from china um be you i'm actually be honest man, yeah, do, you think know, NA, man. do you think na has any chance <laughs> um no man oh, uh, it, it's shit, just... no no <laughs> no we're gonna get destroyed oh god it's, yeah i don't know i i can't see it it's just, it's just everything from the top down here is just like mm -hmm. i don't think it compares to how asia does it even or with the lck kind even of europe even with the lck kind of falling off these last past couple of years i th i personally think they're gonna come back i think th this year they're gonna come back yeah, yeah they look yeah, really oh my god people always ask him hey do you think Korea's gonna come back? no they lost in 2019 how long have you been watching them? Exactly, oh, right? like, they're, they're just like, they, they, they constantly think T1 is smashing everyone. It's like, T1's not even the best team in the league right now. They think Faker's still playing. It's, it's fucking Closer right now playing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. um, I think people, a lot, a lot of the casuals um, kind of get tied in with the brands, you know? Like, they, they, they're like, oh, T1, Faker. Like, mm -hmm. of course they're going to win. You know what I mean? Um, they were always smashing yeah, Korea, like, even though it's damn like one. Anymore. Even though it's like if damn one in first system, place. <laughs> exactly. If you look at the system in like Korea, in China, mm -hmm. even in Europe, there's so many new players coming in. Um, just just kind of like ready to take your job whenever. Um, mm -hmm. That's that's something you don't really have here. Mm -hmm. Like I said it before, with like people not really giving rookies the chance to play on the big stage. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it just it, it matters a lot, and this, this yeah, split was different. Korea, though, for a little, this split was so different for a little bit. It, like we had potluck, insanity, alorum, kind of still is relatively kind of new. <clears throat> yes. And then you had other few players coming in the split for well the uh, LCS 2020 summer split. It was, it was a split where you have tactical. He's still kind of relatively new to the state, you know, to playing overall on a professional team. It was just like I, people kept saying that. And they didn't try anybody out, but this split was like they kind of did do it. But I would just personally like if it's consistent, not just because it's the one split where teams had to do it, you know? Yeah, yeah, and I, I agree. I think a lot of it was the Immortals kind of shit show thing where <laughs> that paved like the way, switching, <laughs> switching out the Academy and LCS rosters. I mean, hey, their their LCS roster got switched to Academy, and they were struggling in Academy. You know, so I that, remember, I remember, kind of shows. It kind of shows, like, yeah. I mean, these academy players really aren't that bad, right? I think a lot of them deserve to play at least like some games. Maybe give them like two to four games. They only had one go, more win know? over you. They only had one more win over you. Exactly, and we beat them in the last week too. I remember so that. Mm -hmm. We're 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 like pretty bad. We're like a ninth <laughs> place team, and we were beating these guys, you know. So you probably like, yeah, yeah I took down so as was I took on so as was a <laughs> fanatic. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah. Um, so for your competition, this split know, the the best. To be fair, people are not gonna know this, but TSM Academy was the best team for a bit there. Yes. Yes. So I think. And but later on, it was C9. They're C9 just literally a game ahead. That's it. Because C9 finished thirteen to five. Uh, TSM Academy was twelve and six. So facing off against C9 Academy with Palafox and Fudge and King, um, what do you think make them so strong? Actually. I don't know what it is about the C9 all game. They're, they're like <laughs> always at the top. Even LCS, I think. But I really think it's like it comes from the top down, you know? Mm -hmm. um, from like the management or whatever. whatever. Whatever they're doing there, I don't know what they're doing. But it's it's definitely working. And that, along with the fact that they've done a good job in the offseason, like scouting players, you know? Like mm -hmm. all their players are individually really good. So I think despite their, their kind of bad start in both splits, like, the consistency is kind of the key, right? And eventually they're just on the top. What about TSM Academy? Because they were in, f 
uh, first place for a while, and then some games, I remember Dokla, and oh, I forgot the other jungler's name, I forgot the jung- their, their jungler's name, Dokla and Winston, Winston. Winston. they were yep. just smashing, there were sm- people, man, they, they need to watch the cat a little bit more, because I, I remember watching a few games where these Winston and Dokla were smashing, like, people think, oh my god, yeah. Dokla from Optic Academy was smashing, like, no way, you're trolling me, no, go back and watch the games, Dokla and Winston were smashing, and then you also had, um, Evolved in the mid lane. He was doing pretty well. People are, are gonna know Lost. Lost was on Echo Fox, uh, the or that was like Echo Fox a while ago. And then you also had Biofrost on there. They, they put, they took away treats, put him, him on the main roster, and now you have Biofrost on there. So playing up against TSM Academy, what do you think made them so strong? Um, I think that again, it comes to like individual player skill. You know, people mm-hmm. are just their carries, I think, evolved and lost like really consistent. Okay. So um yeah they they're always like kind of the backbone of the team Dokla winston can be a bit more inconsistent from my experience um but yeah when they show up they do show up eh? and um at the end of the day, the day like um mm-hmm. their team play looked a bit cleaner than other teams just you, you don't think it going was to like objectives mm-hmm. you know dragon herald baron yeah their team play looked cleaner than other teams and the last team I'll ask for this was specifically Academy was the 100 Thieves Academy team because you know they had a lot of let's say roster swaps at certain points. Medios you know came in for one portion, and then you also had um what was it uh tenacity coming in, and then you also had um contracts went to the main roster. So how was it like playing up against the 100 Thieves Academy? Oh, you mean um after Medios came in? Yeah, so Medios came in, and then he played for like one week, and then he he left, and then now they have Tenacity, Con- uh, Kenvi, and then you have Saligo. Yeah, um, I think I think their current iteration, Hundred uh, Academy, is like their best iteration so far. I I don't know, like maybe these guys are better than the LCS team. Like, I'm not oh, even kidding. Shit. If I I think like maybe if they did internal scrims like they could take down their lcs team mm-hmm. um i just i don't know i think 100 thieves as well kind of got to praise them for like their scouting work too i think they've scouted out like the best okay rookies like can like um whoever else is on that their their academy team like you know the 100 next team 100 next team uh because that's where the rookies came through with a uh, breezy yeah 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 I remember the and and like Poom Poomy or something. Poom. <laughs> um, he he's on he's on uh he's on LCS now too, right? So they've done like a really good job at like finding these players. I think when so now we're in playoffs for the L- LCS. Do you follow the L- LCS as it is? Um, somewhat. <laughs> it, not not really since my season's over, but yeah, yeah, somewhat, yeah. Have you have you been following TS the actual main TSM roster or Golden Guardians? Um. Yeah, I mean, I watch the highlights. So okay, I watch the highlights for every game. So, Golden Guardians yeah. and TSM are coming up literally tomorrow. Literally tomorrow. Who do you think is taking yeah. it? I got Golden Guardians three one. Yeah. Um. Funny you say that because I was just doing like these. You know, Flyquest has these like fish predictions. <laughs> so we throw bait. I think uh, not bait. Just like food into <laughs> into a tank, and it's like they swim to whichever side they think is gonna win. And I think they chose TSM. But I chose Golden Guardians. I think I think they're gonna win three two. I said it on that broadcast too. It's weird though because you know how CLG is like a, the laughing stock of the you know uh, LCS, the actual the, the LCS, not not the Academy part because the Academy part they finished in fifth place at nine and nine, and that was actually yeah, yeah. really interesting because you had Desus, uh that Tuesday Desus, Fragus, and they had what Fit and Wind in the bot lane. Wind so, and Phil, yeah. Wind and Phil. So for. For a CLG's academy team, were they actually... Did you have any issues when facing them? Did you see them as a strong team overall? Or you thought it was a team that had uh, had issues? If if I were to guess, because mm-hmm. this, this split one performance was kind of horrible. Um, well, it was horrible, right? Like, mm-hmm. they went, I think, like, two or three wins or something throughout the entire split. Last place. Yeah, because Dacius was last... roll swap. Right. I mean, he was a mid laner. He rolls up the top lane. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then they... Surprisingly enough, they kept the exact same roster on both teams after coming 10th in both leagues. I was like, that's really fucking crazy. But it worked out for them. Like, they did better than us this split Mm -hmm. as well. So, I think what it really came down to is, like, maybe the players weren't 
too happy with what was going on. Mm-hmm. Probably internal issues, right? Mm-hmm. And maybe they weren't motivated after having a bad start. Now, something like that. When it comes to internal issues, where does that really stem from? Is it just player to player, coach to player, infrastructure? Um, well, this is like a hard one to tackle because this is something I struggle with as mm-hmm. well, a lot. Um, so I don't know. I think it definitely starts from like the very bottom. So like player to player, I, or I have a problem with you, you know. Yeah, I, I don't like. With... I don't like how you entered my lane in ten minutes and took ten CS. <laughs> yes, like I don't. I, I don't like how you're playing. I don't like. It's never like really personal. Or yeah, like yeah. You shouldn't get to that stage. Mm-hmm. Um, but w- when it does get to that stage, like you know, you are like going to be fucked soon. You know, mm-hmm. if you don't deal with it. Um, and yeah, that's kind of where the management comes in uh, handy. Like, if you have a good management, like they're really hands on, they're really like active when they're tackling these issues, then maybe you can defuse it before it blows up. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm guessing for CLG, it blew up and their players just kind of gave up because I remember scrimming them last split and they'd actually just run it down every single time. And we're like, okay, we're blacklisting. Well, no- like, I'm not scrimming these guys anymore. <laughs> They, whoa, they just whoa, like whoa, 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 whoa. soft in. You know what I mean? That <laughs> <laughs> sounds. That sounds like the LCS roster. I mean, nothing's changed. <laughs> holy shit! <laughs> exactly right. Um, <laughs> I guess. Holy crap! They're running it down in scrims. My god! Oh my goodness! So I think coming into this loop, we're kind of like cocky against them. We're like, yeah, these mm-hmm. guys are just gonna run it down again on stage. And no, on stage, like they two would us. You know, mm-hmm. so. That's um, crazy. That's crazy. You really expect that, but these guys like they're definitely better than like what they were doing in scrims. So, what are the scrims for academy teams? Since most people might not be fami- familiar with that, like your um, scrim schedule, or, like scrim blocks. The format's the same for LCS, yeah, so okay. I think they kind of just run concurrently. Um, twelve to five. So you'd meet maybe a bit earlier than twelve. Depends mm-hmm. on your team. Eleven, mm-hmm. ten thirty. Um. And then, yeah, it's just, you play for five hours, so five games. Um, review. Review after mm-hmm. every game, and then closing meeting at the end of the day. And, and then, then when you have teams that, that just run it down, it's just like, don't, I heard certain teams just go, hey, GG, you want to just go next? It's like, holy shit, that sounds just just so bad. Yeah, um, I, I'm personally not a big fan of like remaking scrims or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah. Some people do that, like, oh, they're too far behind, so they just, like, start sprinting it so they can, like, move on faster. <laughs> but, like, what if you're in that situation on stage, you know? Some people have a bad level one, and they're like, oh, can we remake? Like, this is so unrealistic. Like, no, it's fucking not, because mm-hmm. you just invaded us, and you just fucked up, so you have to deal with the consequences, right? And you're not going to understand how to play from ahead either, because if they remake it, it's just like, well... Exactly. Mm. Exactly. And, like, we just spent all that time doing drafts, doing you know going over all that Mm -hmm. and then you just want to remake like that you know so i don't like that kind of scrim culture Mm -hmm. it's kind of become normalized here so i'd say moving forward as as we close out because i have to go to bed for work in the morning um what would be the thing you would change for academy just overall that needs to be changed to make it more better for more players to come up to the main lcs teams i think i think like everything just needs to be a bit more like um connected with like lcs and the amateur scene like all three scenes need to be kind of connected so like you you want to freely move people up from like the amateur scene into academy Mm -hmm. give them a go maybe you know have even a bigger uh academy league than there is right now so there's more people playing um and yeah like i said like just kind of interchanging the rosters um Give more people a chance, basically, right? People don't even remember, man. Team Liquid has Grig on there. <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> like, because people always call Academy in a, in a, a retirement home. It's like, you do have to have, I, I'd say even one veteran is fine, honestly. Some, like, yeah, like yeah. Dig, Last Split, they had a, they just, it was just full of just veterans. That's it. It was like, yeah, you yeah. can't even try on a new player even if you wanted to, because you don't have any, you know? Exactly, yeah. Oof. Yeah, these orgs value like the stability more mm-hmm. than anything, I suppose. Right? So before we close out, I forgot to ask: uh, Is there anything you like outside of league, anime, movies, TV, sports? 
Um, I'm kind of a sports guy, so basketball. Yeah, I do keep up with sports. Um, I used to. Mm-hmm. I used to watch basketball. Not not recently. Okay. Recently, MMA is nice. UFC. Okay. You uh, so which basketball team are you a fan of? No, I wasn't a fan of like any specific team. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I was just kind of like I just followed the NBA at the time. Okay, yeah. Like, two years ago. Now, now they're all now they're a little dome crap. It's just like, oh my god, like these the games. bubble thing. Yeah, something <laughs> this like thing's that. so weird. Yeah. This LeBron's carrying every single game, and freaking uh, Jason Tatum's carrying every every Celtic game. Then there's New Orleans. They're like, now nah, we're not we're not gonna play our rookie anymore. We know we're not making. It's like <laughs> it doesn't matter anyway. We aren't doing anything. <laughs> it's just like, oh my yeah, god, bro. man. It was all, just burn it to the ground then. <laughs> just NA, NA things, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, for for me, I, I play tennis. I'll, I'll try and catch a few tennis games every now and again. People underestimate tennis, man. Tennis, man, tennis is intense to watch. If you know how to play it. I was bad at it because I'm just got not good at shit. But, you know. But no, man. Um, it, We have, uh, you know, if you watch the Golden Guardians TSM, E.G. FlyQuest games. Obviously, you're gonna watch the FlyQuest game. That's your that's the org you play. So I would love to have you on the uh, a podcast that we're gonna do because we usually do normal LCS podcasts on the channel anyway. So if you want to join yeah. those for next week to discuss that, because it's just overall giving knowledge to people who don't know about the scene. You know, I always want to make because yeah, create you doing these videos. It's all about you know talking to people like you who are in the scene and trying to educate people who are not in the scene that way. Because I I've noticed there's a lot of misinformation in the community. Just to, it, it, the littlest things, just the littlest things have misinformation. It's like that's not how these things work, man. You know. Yeah, yeah. Nah, uh, anytime, man. I got, I got so much free time. Okay. Like, um, the last thing I would ask, actually, I, sorry. So, the last thing I, I want to ask is, um, do you think L- LCS should move towards Bo threes? Oh. Even um, academy, even academy, Bo threes. Yeah, I like, like the Bo threes. I, 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 man, I've been watching Korea and China. I love watching Bo threes, man. Yeah. Um. It just takes so long, man. I don't know. I don't know, like, it, it's more of a production issue than, like, a player thing. Like, I would obviously prefer best of series. Really? Okay. There's less flukes. Okay. I think that's, like, everyone would say that, as long as they're not, like, a really, like, flippy team, you know? Um, But, yeah, it's just, like, I think it's a production issue or something. Okay. It's just, do you think that best of threes are not good, good, good for viewers overall? Or do you think the L... Yes, yes. Okay. That's the one. Uh... Like, viewership, it, it kind of sucks to to watch right like say there's like two bottom of the pack teams like I'm i don't know Dignita- and dignitas and <laughs> immortals or something yeah like clg or something <laughs> uh, and you have to watch them play for three games 50 minutes like i think most viewers are gonna fall asleep so <laughs> yeah now would you say that's more of a problem on the org in general for not like having a good public perception or good record in the season to kind of build in hype for those games in general yeah uh, I'd, I'd say so but um you only really have like this amount of players, right? And mm-hmm. like, not everyone has that that strong of a brand. So yeah, it's true. You kind of as as the people operating the league, then like you kind of have to work around that, you know. Oh, but this has been great, man. You are the second LCS level pro to be on. So thank you very much, man. Uh, we'll definitely add you. Who to- was the first? Alorum, actually. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so you're uh, you're like I, I I came here first before he got big. I I'm here. <laughs> We'll be rooting for you, yeah. man, here. Uh, now I can't say anything Thank bad you. about FlyQuest because, you know, he, he's like, wait, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, check out. Make sure you guys check out FlyQuest uh, because they're playing up against EG on Friday. And as you guys know, this is uh, the Nightwing, and this has been Triple from FlyQuest Academy, the actual mid laner for FlyQuest Academy. So, uh, see you guys later. Like, comment, subscribe, most of all, enjoy. Is there anything you want to say before we close out? Anything you want to say to all of the FlyQuest fans out there? Um... Yeah, no, thanks for the support, guys. Sorry sorry about the bad year. And follow my Twitter. Well, Twitter, I'll definitely leave that <laughs> linked, linked in the description box below will be his Twitter. And that's it, guys. See you guys later. Peace. Have a good day. Woof. Hi, guys. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more stuff. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>